Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi everyone, um, welcome to this session. Um, in this session, the main objective of this session uh, is to discuss the financial crisis. So we will be discussing what contributes to financial crisis. Before uh, I lay down the objective of this session, let me see uh, what is a financial crisis. So you might have heard that 2007-8 uh, financial crisis and it is considered as, uh, said as once in a uh, credit century credit tsunami. This is the 2007-8-9 crisis. The other one crisis uh, in 2019-29, uh, this crisis was considered as the uh, mothers of all financial crises which, which then led to the uh, great uh, depression of 1929 to near, lasting for nearly one decade. So this one is also one of the biggest financial crisis and we are more familiar with the recent one that is the 2007-8 financial crisis. So let us give a proper definition uh, of what is financial crisis means. So a financial crisis occurs when there is a particularly large disruption to the information flows in financial markets uh, with the result that financial uh, frictions increases, increase sharply and ultimately financial markets stop functioning. That is a financial crisis is any of a broad variety of situations in which some financial assets suddenly lose a large part of their nominal value and is often triggered by a panic or a run on banks. So now we are going to discuss uh, what are the factors affecting financial crisis and through from an economic lens that is the, that will be the main focus of this session and in the subsequent session we will present all these factors whatever we discuss in this session whatever we have discussed in the previous sessions that may especially in the asymmetric information context and we will be bringing everything together and we will be presenting these aspects in theoretical framework to understand the dynamics of financial crisis. Then subsequent session uh, we will be applying this framework to understand uh, the 2007 2007-8 crisis and also we will be discussing the same framework to understand the financial crisis in some other uh, emerging economies. So let us now focus uh, on the first part that is the factors affecting uh, financial crisis. So we will uh, list out uh, various factors that affect uh, then we will discuss each of them in detail. So more importantly the discussion will be confined to from an economic perspective and what are the theoretical uh, pathway through which uh, this can affect. But actually when we do this theoretical perspective and we apply in the empirical part, it is not necessary that each of them is going to work the way we expect. Uh, there will be so many uh, uh, counter factors in the actual economy because the real economy is a more dynamic and very complex one. Several factors they will be uh, working uh, in both the directions. So let us start why financial crisis uh, occur. So factors playing important roles in financial crisis are uh, the mostly the theoretical aspects. So uh, our focus will, will be here these factors how they worsen, worsening the effects of the asymmetric information problem. How these factors, the factors that we are discussing here uh, we see how these factors worsen the effects of the asymmetric problem in the financial market then how, how come it lead to uh, the collapse of the market. The, that means nothing but the financial crisis. So there are several factors so we will be listing out this one by one. So the first one we will be discussing total six factors and let us try the first one is uh, asset market effects. So of this asset market effects um, there are four uh, related aspects uh, one is called a uh, stock market decline and second one is uh, what if there is a stock market decline. 
uh, that you can see that any of these, uh, whatever the factors that we are discussing, it don't it all can either of these one. If it is more uh, powerful or considerable, uh, then it can uh, really lead to financial crisis. So like then uh, within asset market effect, we are first seeing stock market decline. If there is a stock market crash, uh, the collapse of the stock market, then we will see that how that will lead to a uh, financial crisis then another thing is unanticipated decline in the price level and another the third thing is unanticipated decline in the value of the uh, domestic currency that is depreciation that is if it's unanticipated then another the third uh, last one is asset write downs especially if there are lots of uh, non performing assets so let us discuss one by one uh, in the asset market effects framework the first one uh, is the stock market's decline so what would happen uh, if there is collapse in the stock market if there is a stock market crash so you know that maybe see that if most firms stock price decline so that means there is lead to deterioration in borrowing firms balance sheet right so one of the the previous class we have seen that the net worth uh, net worth is equal to assets uh, minus assets minus uh, liabilities then you can see that uh, if their assets there are actually the assets um, is price uh, decline so what if happen that if their um, stock price declines then obviously you know that uh, when their stock price declines there will be decline in their net worth when they decline in their net worth and because share prices are the valuation of a corporation's net worth that means the asset this assets this will be uh, declining so as a result when the asset price decline then you know that the net worth of the company also declines so when the net worth of the company declines what are the effects of the decline in net worth let us recall what our we have studied in the previous sessions when there is a decline in the net worth of a company we know that this will trigger out the adverse selection and moral hazard problems so the, you can see that if the company stocks decline stock price decline when the company's net worth declines then there will be less lending to those institutions right because lenders are now less protected against adverse selection so because of that you can see that when the lenders are less protected against adverse selection uh, these firms because if it is a stock market crash that means most firms uh, their net worth is low that means uh, most in lenders they will be reluctant to lend as a result the capital flow get affected from the that means from the surplus sector to the deficit sector there will be less incentive for the households and institutional investors to lend in the market because they see that uh, there is increased risk of default uh, in the bond market they won't invest and even they won't invest in the company's ipo so as a result when we see low investment uh, low investment eventually leads to low gdp and low employment so that means here itself you can see that this will be uh, worsening uh, the financial crisis is creating financial crisis that is it stop the functioning that means uh, low investment low lending means is actually worse uh, in a way leading to the stopping of uh, the functioning of uh, the financial market similarly we also seen that low net worth it actually promotes moral hazard behavior right so we have seen that there will be moral hazard behavior because there is low net worth that means there is le not less little be only very little nothing to lose for if the company's net worth is very low company obviously they think that the promoters think that the management thinks that if they engage in risky activities that means if it give them a lump sum profit a huge profit then obviously the company is going to benefit if they lose is actually the public money the borrowed money right that means the moral hazard be the, the low net worth uh, because of the decline in stock price which is leading to low net worth it will lead to it will promote moral hazard behavior and the firms will be taking undertaking more risky investment moving to second aspect that is unanticipated decline in the price level so if there is an un unanticipated decline in the price level so let's see uh, for example deflation so if it is an anticipated obviously you know that market will be prepared accordingly if the decline in the price level is unanticipated then you see what how is going to affect the interest rate 
So, normally most of the interest rate will be fixed interest rate not the flexible one and which and also fixed in nominal terms. So, what is going to happen? Suppose uh, if the asset market effects if, you know as, as a result you know that if there is a uh, effects of deflation the debt contracts uh, you know that how does it affect the interest rate. The interest rate is actually five for example uh, this one uh, is already uh, agreed interest rate for the next suppose we say that rate of interest is uh, 5 percentage this is already agreed for uh, next 20 years. If there is a deflation then you know that they have to anyway pay 5 percentage itself but you know that because of deflation the value of money has increased right. So, they will be just still paying 5 percentage, but the in real terms this 5 percentage may be equal to 10 percentage, 10 percentage or or we can say that it may be or it may be uh, 15 percentage or 20 percentage right, uh, 20 percentage like that. So, what we can see from here is that debt servicing uh, that is the interest payment that burden increases if there is deflation right. So, that means instead of that uh, 5 percent that I agree that one is the nominal 5 percent but they will be still paying 5 percent but in real terms is going to be much much greater than this 5 percent that means their debt servicing the payment interest payment uh, it increases this is nothing but the their liability is going to increase right in the net worth uh, we always seen that that the assets minus liability. So, because of the increase in the debt that is a interest payment a payment uh, burden a real burden increase in the real burden of uh, interest payment also because where then the liability side increase then obviously you know that the net worth is going to decline. So, this leads to decline in net worth because of the increase in the burden of debt. So, that means increase in value firms borrowing liabilities. So, this is this would lead to again uh, make this firm vulnerable to uh, adverse selection and moral hazard problems. So, this would lead to again the point that we discussed that net worth is a declining net worth it leads to the worsening the asymmetric information problem uh, adverse selection problem the way we discussed in the previous session that means there will be less lending and it also encourage uh, uh, incentivize the banks or the financial institutions uh, or any institution who are the firm who have been bo who have borrowed it uh, the for them to engage in risky activities. Then the third one is uh, under the asset market effects this one is unanticipated decline unanticipated decline in the value of domestic currency. Uh, you know uh, many firms they issue debt denominated in foreign currency. Then what would happen? Suppose a company in India, a firm in India uh, they issued a corporate commercial paper uh, and they have borrowed from uh, abroad that is from dollar. They borrowed from uh, in dollar and obviously they have to repay their debt and interest income in terms of dollar. Uh, what if there is an unanticipated decline in foreign exchange rate of domestic currency? Suppose at the time of borrowing, suppose it was one, to one dollar was equal to, for example, one dollar, the exchange rate was uh, 70 rupees. What if uh, there is the decline in the value of domestic currency? What if it becomes one dollar becomes 100 rupees? So, in this case, you know that uh, when there is an unanticipated decline in the value of domestic currency, now when they make the repayment, uh, both principal and interest income, they have to pay more, right? So, they have taken, for example, they have taken uh, 1 million. Um, uh, when the exchange rate was this one now when they are paying when the exchange rate was 70 now when the when the suppose the dip, dip, uh, due to depreciation it became uh, 100 rupees you need to pay to get 1 dollar that means when the repayment time they need to pay more that means to get 1 dollar you need to spend uh, 100 rupees right. So, in this way the debt burden again we can see that because of this the debt burden of firms increase the debt burden of firms increase here and as a result again we can say that uh, this is nothing but firms uh, liabilities 
firms liabilities will be uh, increasing uh, when firms liabilities increasing we know that clearly the net worth of the bank is declining so this again through the asset market effect we can see that the problem of adverse selection um, leads to adverse selection and moral hazard problem so the point which we discussed in a couple of minutes before uh, we have been discussing uh, discussing so that point is relevant uh, here as well uh, that means uh, declining net worth uh, it makes the firms the borrowed firms more vulnerable to adverse selection and moral hazard and you can see that the issue of unanticipated decline in value of uh, domestic currency as well as the previous one the unanticipated decline in the price level both is actually a macroeconomic risk a systematic risk uh, that affecting most of the firm and as a result if the most of the firms who borrowed from the market and if most of the firms net worth decline then you know that that would lead to hampering or affecting the flow of funds or the, the lending funds into the market and as a result uh, overall the smooth functioning of the uh, financial market get uh, disrupted and as a result the it will start stopping the market and I, I ultimately we can see that a kind of financial crisis happen then uh, one more thing that is coming under this uh, asset market effect is the asset write downs here in this case what if um, if uh, the uh, more and more non performing assets are in uh, firms balance sheet so it's an accounting term asset write downs this one is an accounting term uh, used to describe a reduction in the book value of an asset uh, due to economic or fundamental change in the asset so for example illiquid investments such as real estate and banks non performing assets and you know that if there are for example in the case of banks if there is uh, non performing assets uh, in the bank for more than one year so after certain point of time they have to take it out uh, they have to write down this from the balance sheet so obviously you know that our framework that they end up with that uh, asset minus liabilities uh, when uh, illiquid assets investments such as real estate and banks and pas written down write downs happen then obviously the uh, assets uh, will be declining that is nothing but assets declining then the you know that the net worth of the bank also will be uh, declining so when banks make that the write downs can be uh, caused by the either negative change in the overall macroeconomic environment or microeconomic occurrence such as building deteriorations etc so as a result the decline in net worth and we have seen that uh, decline in net worth uh, leads to the problem that we mentioned that means uh, it worsened uh, it aggravates the asymmetric information problem and as a result you can see that adverse selection uh, and moral hazard problem get worse and as a result the smooth flow of fund from the surplus sector to the, the needy sector uh, it get uh, disrupted that coming to the second one this one is increase in interest rate in the market what if there is increase in interest rate in the market and how does it will lead to financial crisis so if increase in interest rate is due to increased demand for credit or shortage of funds due to decline in uh, money supply then what would happen so suppose it uh, happen that there is increased demand for credit or shortage of funds due to decline in money supply so you know that in a, mainly interest rate increase will be happening either due to increase in demand or keeping money supply constant or increase in demand remain constant and there is decline in money supply uh, so both actually would lead to increase in interest rate so let us see what if the market rate of interest rate increases so who is willing to pay highest interest rate about the supplier of bonds among the supplier of bonds that is firms so you can see that uh, firms or individuals and firms with the riskiest uh, investment they actually will be willing to pay more that is nothing but we can see that uh, firms with a high default risk or poor ratings that means high risk firms are willing to pay highest interest rate in the market at the same time we already know that when the market rate rate of interest increases firms with good credit risk are less likely to borrow and obviously bad risk are still willing to borrow 
So obviously what is going to happen apparently you can see that the market will be over represented by high risk uh, or individuals and firms borrowers high risk borrowers and then that would obviously we, you know that that we already studied that means it will create it will lead to the problem of adverse selection adverse selection issue right because the market will be more with high risk borrowers and oh, even in the long term uh, long term we can see that they won't be paying back uh, they, they will be making default risk and as a result uh, in the market the lenders will be reluctant to lend uh, in the coming days. Not only that even the adverse selection itself we find that uh, if this kind of scenario happen if there is an increase in interest rate uh, if it is increase in interest rate firms of good credit risk uh, will back out and if only bad risk firms are only in the market then obviously the lenders they also get the signal that the market is market consists of only high risk firms so eventually they also stop lending in the market then uh, if the increase in interest rate we also see that this would reduce the cash flow of the firms because you know that the liability of the firms uh, the borrowed firms are increasing uh, so that means uh, the cost of borrowing is increasing so the cash flow that is the difference between cash receipts and expenditure so there will be less internal finance for this firm because of the interest rate increases the cost of borrowing increases so they have to rely on external finance and then again you know that uh, this is again subject to asymmetric information so in the one of the previous session also we have seen that uh, because of the asymmetric information uh, more firms uh, you can see that empirically we have seen looking at the figure that means uh, internal finance is becoming the main source of uh, borrowing for many firms because of asymmetric information but if the interest rate increase that means already most firms already they will be having some debt burden anyways so, so debt burden will be there if there is increase in interest rate actually their cash flow declines so as a result they have to depend on external finance but again because the internal finance will be uh, getting affected because of the reduction in the cash flow and they will be subject to more asymmetric information and again they have to depend on external finance and which is again subject to adverse selection and more hazard problem and third factor that one affecting financial crisis that could uh, that could possibly lead to financial crisis is a deterioration in financial balance sheet what if financial institutions particularly banks uh, when their balance sheet deteriorate to some reason maybe because of the systemic or that is the idiosyncratic or systematic risk maybe because of a, either of these for example or all of them for example for instance what if they balance sheet deteriorates so suppose particularly of banks financial institutions balance sheet and you know that uh, banks uh, they play major role uh, in financial market because they are well positioned to engage in information production so we have seen that banking industry they are well positioned to engage in uh, information production collection of information then the production and and using this information for their own business and so that uh, there won't be any free rider problem so they'll be using it for their own information that is to the, the, their own business that is to provide private loan so actually these banks they channelize capital to productive investment you know that uh, since banks are having this comparative advantage the households who is not well uh, versed with the financial market they will be mostly preferring the banking system that the households and low profile households individual uh, investors they will be preferring banking system as uh, to park their money right to invest deposit their surplus so that the banks they are collecting uh, this this money then they are transferring this money these funds to the different sectors of the economy where these are mostly needed that means they make it for uh, productive investment what if due to some reason which i mentioned already if the banks balance sheet deteriorate that means as if their bank balance sheet deteriorate uh, their lending will come down so if there is a banking crisis erupt because of this bank's balance sheet deteriorate then obviously you know that uh, banking crisis erupt and there maybe you can see by bank balance sheet deteriorate maybe there will be lots of NPS 
non performing assets so then their lending will come down and this will slow down in economic activities and because banks have been acting they act as a one of the key intermediary a financial intermediary that is collecting money from those who are having surplus and uh, channelizing this fund to the sectors uh, where it can be made for made more productive use so that will lead to deterioration uh, that will lead to the uh, financial crisis that means uh, stopping the flow of funds from the surplus sector to uh, needy or deficit sector and fourth one this is a little bit related to the uh, issue that we discussed that the deterioration in the banks balance sheet uh, we can see that what if there is a banking crisis if what if some banks fail uh, if there is some banking crisis happen Uh, if the deterioration in the banking crisis, if ba banks balance sheet balance sheet is severe, then you know that uh, they start failing. So again, we have seen uh, that means uh, if there is a rumor that actually some banks are not paying back their deposit, then the depositors will be running to the bank. Bank run will happen. You know that deposit can be pulled out quickly. but at the same time uh, you know that all these funds are uh, already been distributed already in the market uh, in the loanable fund market and so that bank cannot pull it back bank cannot call back all the loans so we have seen that deposits are more liquid uh, but bank loans are less liquid right it cannot be called back so this would would lead to a bank panic uh, it would lead to a bank panic so that means if one bank fails and then because of the asymmetric information problem uh, multiple banks fail simultaneously as withdrawal of deposit leading to bank failure so we have seen that even a good bank uh, they also won't be able to pay back deposit if all the deposit uh, depositors uh, turn to the counter uh, collectively that means everyone come to the bank if bank run the pace of bank run increases that means bank panic because of bank panic then multiple banks fail uh, simultaneously so this peer can spread to from one institution to another so we already seen sources of contagion uh, is the asymmetric information so everyone because of this issue that means this also point we discussed that the depositors case because the fearing of the safety of their deposit because they don't know the quality of banks loan portfolio uh, so as a result uh, there will be bank failure then another related fact is uh, what if there is increase in uncertainty in the market because one of the principle that we discuss in the beginning of this course that means uncertainty uh, reduces welfare so for the welfare of the economy we prefer to have more certainty in the economy what if there is increase in uncertainty increase in uncertainty about uh, interest rate uh, about the inflation about the economic conditions or political conditions all these things if there is an increase in uncertainty uh, dramatic increase in uncertainty uh, in financial market due to bank failure or stock market crash or war uh, or any fact factors that would lead to increase in Uh, uncertainty then as a result uh, you know that there is asymmetric information then uh, resulting in inability for lenders to distinguish good credit risk and bad credit risk and as a result there will be less protection from adverse selection uh, for the potential investors and they will be less willing to lend and low investment and then uh, low gdp so the factors that we discuss here we discuss five major aspects uh, that would lead to a uh, financial crisis and the next one uh, which we need more time to discuss that the government fiscal imbalances uh, that we will discuss in the next session uh, thank you uh, see you in the next session